It's time for Remodel Revolution. And now, an award-winning contractor with over 40 years experience. Here is Alex Guthrie. Welcome to another edition of Remodel Revolution. I'm your host, Alex Guthrie. We're coming to you live from the Remodel Revolution World Headquarters, deep in the great state of Texas, deep from the heart of the great state of Texas. Can't forget that part. <laughs> We're going to have a great show today. Uh, we're going to have a guest that I've been chasing around the country for months to get him to sit in this chair next to me. And he's a busy guy and they have stores all over the place and they just expanded into our market. We're going to talk to Richard Suarez with Panoramic Doors in just a little bit. Um, uh, I'm actually, I use their product. I love their product. I'm so glad to have him here with us today. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of our upcoming shows uh, this morning because we have a lot of stuff cooking, a lot of great guests coming on, and I, and I wanted to sort of uh, tell you what's coming up so you can get ready and put it on your calendar. I'm not going to give you dates, though. You're going to have to check my website to figure it out. Uh, next week, we're going to have Randy Hargrave, the owner of Hargrave and Hargrave Foundation Repair. Randy is a uh, has been a guest here before. They're also a sponsor of the show, but they've got a great product. They do helical piers. They do foundation repair. They're well-respected. They've been in business since the 1960s. His dad started the company. It's great information, so put that on your calendar. That is something that you need to see. And then uh, we're going to have Poonam Patel. She's the owner of Urban Loop Studios in Dallas. She is a woman-owned business, and she's young. She's energetic. She's something else. She, she's got a great story to tell. She's an architect, uh, so we're, she's going to be on. We're also going to have Steve Lawton with Total Air and Heat. Steve is a always a great guest to have. We talk about air conditioning and, and new things coming up in air conditioning and great advice from Steve on what you need to be doing. Now, when we have Steve on, we're going to be, um, we're going to be talking about, it'll be right before spring. So we're going to talk about things you need to start getting your system ready for. Um, also, and then we're going to have Carol Longacre with Service Roundtable. Service Roundtable is a really interesting company. It's an organization, uh, and they have a bunch of small businesses that they work with around the country, and they give a lot of great advice and seminars, and they, they help small businesses, particularly in the construction industry. So uh, I'm really looking forward to having Carol here, and it's hard to get her when she's in town because the girl travels a lot. So we're really looking forward to that. Hey, um, have you found... Texas Weather Live on the internet yet. If you haven't, you need to go to on the internet, key in Texas Weather Live. They also have a, a mobile app that I have on my phone. I use them a lot. It's an internet weather service. They're, they're really nice people. And they're very good at, at uh, it's, it, the app is fantastic. And uh, I'm bringing this up because they found us. And they've invited us to participate on their channel. They're going to start running our show on their channel, which is huge for me. Um, I'm really, I'm really proud that they're doing this. So, they are on Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV. Um, we're really excited, and we really appreciate meteorologist William Cole uh, for this great opportunity. So, check out. Texas Weather Live at TXWX Tracker. TXWX Tracker. Give them a give them a shout. Um, news flash. Ah, hey, there he is. Thank you, Ziggy. Have you noticed a bunch of out-of-state car plates lately? Well, they ain't just visiting. Uh, they're here to stay, and there's many more to come. DFW is averaging. 100,000 new residents a year, over 1 million in the last 10 years, and it projected to draw another 1 million by 2029. In 2017 to 2018, we gained 132,000 new neighbors. Wow, that's a lot of people. And that's a lot of water. 
and a lot of electricity. That's a lot of waste. And so the question is, where is it coming from and where is it going? Not just the waste, <laughs> but the water and, and the electricity and all that. You know, it, it's, it's an amazing thing to have any city in this country uh, to have a migration to them that quickly that you affect the infrastructure, all of the, um, the water, electricity, all of those things has to supply to those people. And that's a, that's a huge task. We're going to have a drought. Here's another news flash. We are going to have a drought. We are going to have a really hot summer. And our water supply is going to get low. And our electricity is going to get stretched to its max when everybody's running air conditioning. So this week I want to talk about uh, some uh, uh, a, a series. We're going to start a series on how to be conservative with all of our resources that we have locally. It's really important that we all start thinking about it right now. Now, in the past, when we were just a nice small town, this wasn't as big of an issue. In 1957, we actually had a drought that almost wiped out the city. We ran totally out of water. And they started building lakes after that. And they all started coming online 20, 30 years later and saved the day. And created a lot new, a lot more fishing and skiing. <laughs> so we all like that, but we all really like having water. Uh, we're also filling up our landfills. So when you see, uh, when you're watching TV and you're looking at, uh, they're showing the Dallas mountains. I saw a show and they <laughs> actually had the Dallas mountains. That's probably the landfills that we've built. <laughs> and so uh, they're filling up really fast. They're all over town. And if you drive down I-30 between um, Grand Prairie and Dallas and you're heading to or from Dallas and the wind's blowing out of the north, you smell the landfill. It's awful. It's awful. If you've been in downtown Dallas uh, in the evening when there's uh, cool, cool air and it's kind of holding everything down off that Trinity River, it's, uh, I call it the Pepe La Fuma of downtown Dallas because it's pretty it's pretty strong. So um, this week I want to talk about some conservation tips. And the first step to slowing down this trend is to become aware of how we can make a difference. And I'm going to start this week with recycle, reuse, and repurpose. So if uh, there's just a few general tips, uh, nothing, you know, nothing real technical or anything. We're not going to get into that. Number one, if you need a piece of furniture, there are countless used furniture stores that not only will save you money, but often money you spend goes to a worthy cause like helping others. So if instead of going and buying things that have to be uh, uh, manufactured, go and try and use some used stuff. If you need some furniture, ask the family, ask, ask the neighbors. There's always somebody getting rid of something. Also, if you're in Dallas, go out to Forney. Go out uh, uh, 80, Highway 80, east of town, and there's these giant warehouses of, of furniture, used furniture. And, you know, all of this helps the environment. All of it, when we're not manufacturing, we're not creating pollution. Number two, that's our uh, reuse. Our recycling um, is simple and helpful. Did you know? The U.S. recycling rate is around 34.5%. If we're able to get that rate to 75%, the effect will be like removing 50 million passenger cars from U.S. roads. Over 11 million tons of recyclable clothing, shoes, and textiles make their way into landfills each year. So recycling, obviously, and we all know this, recycling is really, really important and a lot easier to do these days because actually we almost all have recycle bins that we can put out every week for our trash collection. And it's just use, discipline yourself to use them. But also take old clothes and old things to people that will resell them or use them or give them to, the, you can take them to church. You could take it to Salvation Army. You could take it to Goodwill. There's lots of things you can do other than throwing them in the trash and filling up the landfills. So let's, let's do a lot more recycling. 
There is lit literally, pun fully intended, nothing in our garages that can't be repurposed recycled or reused in some way or another. There are countless websites such as Pinterest and others that are designed specifically for that reason. I, I went last night and I was kind of doing a little research on this. And uh, Pinterest is really fascinating because people will take bicycles, old bricks, uh, coffee cans, <laughs> you know, anything, anything man-made they will take and they'll find a way to reuse it in a clever way. So if you, instead of just tossing things, ask if you have a neighbor, you know, sometimes we have neighbors that are sort of DIY people and project people, ask them if they want it. Don't just put it out on the curb for the trash. See if someone else can use it. Um, so that's our that's our uh, recycle, reuse, and repurpose tip. There's many, many more things we can talk about, but I just want to sort of get it in your mind to to do these things and make. We need to all make an effort to not fill up our landfills. Not we'll start talking about saving water and electricity and things like that in, in the coming weeks. So um, our remodelers tip today is really. Um, a tool. We're going to talk about a tool that I re I really like. Our two. It's a tool review, and it's brought to us by the Dallas Builders Association. Um, this week, I'm reviewing the coolest and most versatile tool that has come out in years. Now, I know it's been here a long time, and guys in the business have been using them, but I grew up in an era when we didn't have tools like these. And this is called an oscillating multi-tool. So if you're even a DIY person, this tool is incredible. And what it has a very various blades and attachments to it that you can cut things with. Uh, has metal cutting blades, wood cutting blades. And so in if you're having it say cut a hole in sheetrock, you can take this tool and without having to to cut into wires and and like we used to have to just take a big saw and stick it in there. This thing cuts real easily. When we're trimming things, we use them. All of the trades are using these tools now. Oscillating tools, um, or, or we call it, we just all call them on job site a multi-tool. Um, an oscillating multi-tool, they're uh, far from sexy, but they specialize in making cuts that no other saw can do effectively close undercuts, plunging, flush cuts, and all manner of tight space. Um, I use, uh, we use these constantly in remodeling because we have to, because we're kind of taking things, trimming them out. We're not, uh, we don't always have easy access to it. And this multi-tool has really changed the way uh, people, now, uh, if you've got an electrician or a uh, plumber on, you're in your house or on your job site, don't let them think that all of a sudden they're a carpenter because they have a multi-tool. <laughs> uh, they'll, they'll cut everything inside. I had that happen the other day. I had a guy, an uh, electrician looking for a, a wire and he, I came in there and he had, he had cut so much sheetrock out of this place. I went, oh, great. Now I have to call the sheetrocker and get them back in. So you don't want to get too crazy. One of the things I love about the multi-tool, the picture I showed you is a is a plug-in version of it, which they're very powerful. But, of course, there's the uh, battery, the cordless, which most people use now. It really, all of our tools have gone to cordless, including saws and things that we used to not be able to have cordless. So... Um, that is, uh, that, that's our tool review of the week. Go find one. There's a, every tool manufacturer has them and, uh, they're easy to find at all the big box stores. So we'll do that. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have the pros corner, uh, brought to you by total air and heat. We'll be right back. 
The hardest working and arguably most important system in our homes is our air conditioning and heating system. It heats the air, it cools the air, and it filters the air. That's why it's so critical to have it checked and maintained by the very best professionals available. It's time to contact Total Air and Heat at TotalAir.com. Get that system pruned and tuned. If you want to have the very best experience, you've got to hire the very best company. Total Air's employees are honest, well-trained, and thoroughly background checked. I never have to work worry about sending their technicians out to my clients' homes. Family owned and operated for three generations, Total Air and Heat has been a fixture in North Dallas for over 60 years. Total Air is a proud dealer of the train air conditioning systems, and you know how hard it is to stop a train, so give them a call at 972-881-0020, that's 972-881-0020, or contact them at TotalAir.com today. Did you know that older wood, the older the wood is, the harder the wood is, the more seasoned the wood is? The old, old wood in houses is so hard that a lot of times when we're remodeling houses, we're pretty amazed at how hard it is to cut the stuff. The new wood that we have is farmed. Uh, it's actually young cut trees and they're hybrid trees and they're a lot softer, pulpier than the old wood that we used to use. Um, if you if you don't if you think it doesn't make a difference, we're constantly amazed at the idea that people just throw this stuff out, and that's what this segment is about. This is our pros corner. It's brought to us by Total Air and Heat, and I see all the time on job sites, particularly on remodeling sites. Um, where people take old wood and they just throw it out like it has no value. And the truth is, is that it really does. And I'm advocating, and we have been for years, recycling that wood and reusing it. And so it's not a difficult thing. It takes a little time to pull the nails out of it and clean it up, but you can always reuse it. It is a whole lot harder and stronger than this new wood that we have that's, that compresses really easy it's very kind of fluffy and puffy, and you can stick your fingernail in it. Well, this old stuff, you, you can't do that with. Wood is actually a very precious resource. And every time we order a bundle of studs, we are take, they're cutting trees to, manu, to uh, produce that. I, I guess you don't manufacture studs, you produce them. And so the more we save, the more we reuse the old material, the better. I've never understood why people just throw it away. So number one, no fuel burned. Here's, so, here's three reasons why this really helps the environment. No fuel burned to deliver it to the job site. So you're not, you don't have a big diesel truck going from East Texas or Canada or wherever, or a rail line pulling it down. You're, this is wood that's right there for you on site. No time lost waiting on delivery. So all you've got to do is tell your carpenters, clean it up and reuse it. Now, some of them will do it instinctively, but not a lot of them these days. I have guys that will throw away perfectly good material and then wait for the new stuff. And it really makes me, <laughs> it really aggravates me. Plus, it ends up in a landfill. So here we go again, filling up landfills with stuff that we don't need to put in the landfill. Um, also, we're, we're cutting down less trees. And finally, and more importantly, is the quality of the material. So here's what happens. When you put a big heavy structure on top of these soft studs, you have to add a whole lot of beams and support to keep things from moving because actually wood, because it's fibrous, it actually compresses with weight. And the only way, the only thing that doesn't uh, is steel. So if you, you, you'll end up having to put steel columns in or triple or double or use man-made uh, columns and, and things like that for the structural part. So re reusing this old wood prevents a lot of that. It prevents a lot of, of double steps in, in the manufacturing process, the shipping process. And, you know, it makes good sense. So reuse those old studs. Don't just throw them away. That is the pros corner. 
that is brought to us by Total Air and Heat, and we thank them for that. Now, this week, our featured guest, and this is brought to us by Hargrave Foundation Repair, this week's featured guest. I met Panoramic Doors through a customer who was doing research. Uh, they were trying to decide if they uh, or how they wanted to open up a wall and create an outdoor, indoor, outdoor area. And as I've told uh, Richard and Richard Suarez and John Russell, the, the people I deal with at Panoramic Doors, uh, I call it bringing the outside in. And essentially, you're, you, we now have a lot of people that like to do this. And we're also building these living areas where we're outside of the house. We have an outdoor living area. And with this system that they've developed, and they have proprietary um, uh, licenses and, and uh, engineering on these doors to help them work better, uh, I found that I really loved them, and I have actually using them. And so um, they've just moved here from Cal or expanded into our market from California. They're in Fort Worth. And when we come back from this next break, we're going to visit with uh, Richard, and we're going to talk about panoramic doors. I'm really excited about this, so stay tuned. We'll be back in 60. Sometimes it's a question of do I call or don't I call the foundation repair company? But what if I tell you that I know a foundation repair company that will tell you if you don't need foundation repair? That's right. Hargrave and Hargrave Foundation Repair has been in business for over 50 years, and they know the difference. One of the last family-owned foundation repair businesses in North Texas, not only are they honest, they know what causes your foundation to move, and they know how to fix it. Don't be duped by fly by night foundation companies that provide shortcuts and messy fixes call hargrave and hargrave foundation repair at 972-442-3415 at the first sign of trouble hargrave uses the chance helical pier system exclusively because it's the highest quality most reliable helical pier money can buy 972-442-3415 or contact them at hargravefoundation.com one of the uh, trends that we've seen the last few years is a wall that is complete glass that opens up to the outside because, of course, we're building these beautiful outdoor living areas and we want to, we want to enjoy them. Also, people that are building on large acre tracks that are out in the country, they want to be able to open everything up. It's really, uh, it's really fun. It's really exciting. But it's not always easy to find the right door system. And... Uh, a client of mine called me up and said, hey, will you go look at these this door system? We really like them. Uh, they were, you know, the price point was competitive and the quality was good. And so I go over to Panoramic Doors. I knew nothing about them. And I met uh, their salesman and ended up loving them and inviting them to par participate on my show, which they've done. And I'm so proud to have them here. And Today we have with us Richard Suarez, who's the Senior Vice President of Sales. He said I could just call him Vice President because he thinks senior sounds old. Welcome, Richard. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> it's great to be here. How are you doing? How I'm doing well. Doing? I'm grateful for this so, opportunity to visit with you today. Well, I appreciate that. So you guys just expanded into Fort Worth from California. We did. We opened yeah. up our facility, 130,000 square foot facility in Fort Worth in June of this of 2019. Wow, wow. And and I've been to your facility and your facility is fantastic. Yeah, it's I gorgeous. love it. It's really it's really pretty. I wanted to stay and have lunch. It was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> and cuz you know, game rooms for the employees, you're very very employee centric. Correct. We uh, we believe in the power of have developing a good culture, a healthy culture within our environment and are committed to do so. Yeah, yeah. And, and so tell us a little bit about the history, a brief history of Panoramic Doors. We're proud of it. It's um, Our company was started. Our founder is still involved in the business. He's our CEO and sits on the board of directors. He started this concept. His name is Alan Reese. started this concept um, about 11 years ago and brought it over to the U.S. So uh, From it, where? From the U.K. From the U.K., so if, uh, so if someone tells me they want a European style door, am I getting a European style or just a European invented door? I would say a little bit of both <laughs> in its best aspects for sure. 
Well, you know, there that there's distinct differences, or in in the past, it's been distinct differences in in a traditional uh, unit that we manufactured and used here versus everybody was going. Oh, I want that European door, you know, the full glass and all that. But that's a different story. How many stores do you guys have? We currently have eleven showrooms around the country. Five of which, Alex, were open in the last year. Wow, wow! So you're really, you're really taking off. Yeah, like, we I have, didn't realize that. Yeah, we've made a pretty big and um, and committed um, um, gesture endeavor towards expanding our product nationwide. Man, um, now you have your door. You have a propri proprietary uh, system, and one of the things that I found fascinating about your system was that as a remodeler to retrofit it, it was very friendly. It was something that my guys picked up on real quick and they were able, of course it didn't, didn't hurt that we went to the class for an hour and they had really good donuts, but, <laughs> but we figured it out anyway. Um, t talk to us about some of the, the differences in the pan panoramic door in the engineering. It's an unhinged system, Alex, therefore each panel operates separately. And the beauty of that process or that system is the fact that it doesn't disrupt the adjoining room. So we're so committed to this category. The indoor outdoor living is certainly a trend that is here today and will only get stronger in coming years. Our product will function without having to disrupt the outside area. So many folks have invested uh, in furnishings in the outside area. So there is no movement needed. You know where the doors will slide and stack uh, once the project it's funny installed. because where where we installed them, I was over there one day and and uh, and I started opening all the I think there's five or six panels I can't remember it and, and they slide down and you pivot it and open it to the side it's it's really easy and she goes you know we never even do that anymore she goes we what they love about them is that they only have to open one or two or three however many however many they want because the doors actually slide down the track. And then you just sort of place them where you want. It's very, very, very interesting. Very user friendly. So you're, um, you're. Tell us how this works. So the track, uh, if I remember right, everything works off the top. Is that right, or is it the bottom? It's the bottom. It's the bottom. The track it all slides on the bottom. Correct, and that's where we're yeah. unique from the rest of the marketplace, which is all top track driven. Ours is bottom track driven. Uh, the installation is still a critical component of having a successful system. However, it's a much easier um, way to navigate the installation than having a system that relies on a strong substrate. Well, essentially, you have to have a level top, a level bottom like Correct. you would. It's got everything to be square and level. doesn't matter what door system you use. That's the case. What I really liked about your door system is that there was a lot of flexibility in, or a reasonable amount of flexibility in adjustments. Correct. Because what we do know is that houses move, right? Correct. And so you're able to take this door and make minor adjustments over time. So you might, you know, we all, in, particularly in our part of the country, we have a, a summer movement and we have a winter movement. We have a, a drought movement and we have a wet movement, which is essentially what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm always called out to houses to adjust doors. Your doors are really easy to adjust. And they're engineered that way. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, that's all by design. Correct. Now, you have an interesting magnetic system with it. Can you explain that to us? It basically enhances the functionality of the product, makes the product. It doesn't really rely on physical strength of the user. It really allows the system to operate quite easily. So it's a system that can be functioned by any member of the family it doesn't rely on physical strength. I, I remember when we were installing this unit, uh, <laughs> the guy installing it, he kept getting frustrated. He goes, those magnets, he goes, once you have that thing in there. It locks it in. Oh my gosh. I mean, that magnet, I, I, I'm like, okay, take everything off, all your hardware off. <laughs> Don't wear any jewelry around that thing or, you, or we're stuck with you here. Uh, it was pretty interesting. So you don't just do, in your manufacturing, you don't just assemble. You also have some glass production. To, let's talk about that a little bit, because that's kind of unique, I think, in your industry where you do your own glass production. Alex, we're committed to quality, and we're committed, 
to quality of all our products throughout the entire process. Therefore, we do uh, manufacture our insulated glass units in our facility here in Fort Worth, and uh, it allows us to control quality all through the process and also access to the product. Well, um, one of the things that we always have to wait on in our in our business, when particularly when we're talking about big units, whether it's windows or doors, and we have this sealed glass system that goes with everything, there's a time element involved in having to manufacture that and then having it right. And if something goes wrong, then you have to go through all that again. Mm -hmm. It seems like you've cut some of that out. We have. We yeah. really have. So you're, you're, I don't remember having a long wait time on your doors or anything. But the other thing is, if there's a problem with the glass, and that happens, that's not uncommon because we taking two pieces of glass, we're sucking all the air out from in between them. We're coating one piece with uh, low E coating, which is essentially aluminum oxide. And then we're maybe they're injecting a gas or so. Anyway, it's complicated. It's not like the good old days where we had a piece of glass we stuck, <laughs> we stuck it in the hole. Now we have this very complex piece of glass that we're, and so there's things that can go wrong. And we have access to having a facility in order to provide a solution should yeah. be needed. So yeah. we're yeah. big believers of that. Now, I used to be able to only get mill finish. Eventually, they got to where they would do bronze and white. Mm -hmm. Let's talk color. Color is a big thing. It allows a product to become truly customizable. And in saying that, we have two different types of products. We have an aluminum product where the scope of color choices is truly customizable. With our vinyl products, we offer a white and beige product as well as four laminate choices um, in the industry's most hottest colors. Yeah, and so it seems like we were able to do custom colors as well, right? We can. Yeah. On our aluminum products, you certainly mm -hmm. can. What's the difference between aluminum and vinyl? Why is that different? Um, it's a choice that customers make in terms of functionality and performance of the product. Uh, both products are great, alt, um, uh, great choices for customers. Our um, aluminum product allow more customization of the product. Our vinyl products um, add a level of comfort and are a bit more flexible in the installation. Uh, so it's we have two great choices for the consumer. And so you, what about the interior finish? So there's always a lot of talk about: Do I use wood? Do I use vinyl? Mm -hmm. do, I, do we have what sort of options do we have on that? On our aluminum products, we have the. Customer has a choice of six different species that they can clad the products. Uh, so they do have an ability to customize, uh, have a, the warmth of wood brought into the home. However, even with a laminate product on the vinyl uh, section, you have choices of whether or not to apply those colors either to the interior or the exterior or to both. Yeah, and that's important. Uh, a lot of houses will have like a... Uh, a lot of us have gone to a clad system and now vinyl windows. Vinyl windows used to be, or vinyl in general, in the conduct, in construction industry, we used to have, uh, well, it started out pretty bleak. I mean, it was, it was white or beige, mm -hmm. right? And so now we have, we, we can do a cladding on windows and doors. And where I'm going with this is, I can take your doors and I can pretty well match the windows on any house that I'm doing as Correct. far as the finish on the outside. Correct. With vinyl specifically, you have white and beige are industry standards. But like I said, choosing a laminate solution for color, mm -hmm. you invite four of the industry's hottest colors in the market today mm -hmm. uh, for either an interior or exterior application or both. Uh huh. So the um, there's no advantage uh, energy wise or anything like that, whether you do vinyl or aluminum? No, it's a personal choice in terms of the environment. Because a lot of times, uh, a, a lot of us will use bronze. You know, the bronze is uh, the dark gray color that you see on houses. And I've gone away from a gridded window. I like a non grid glass. I like a totally clear. And for those of you that are thinking about doing windows or doors in your house, you really need to consider that because you don't realize, especially after you've been looking through them for years and years, how the grid affects your sight lines and sort of shrinks down your, your visual area. 
Uh, and so a non-grid, and then you do a bronze color on the outside, your doors will match that bronze color because you don't really do windows. You just do doors. We so, also offer some windows. Um, they're basically miniature doors. Right, uh, right. So we found that our customers enjoy entertaining the outside, again, bringing so the like outside in. So like a pass-through. It's like it a pass-through. And, and I saw that in your showroom, and I thought, well, what a clever little – uh, thing to do there. They're trying to convince me that that door's really a window and it works great Correct. though. It works it's great. It's a great way to yeah. enhance your living uh, indoors and outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we're um, talking about height and width, what are we, do we have a maximum of width and height? We certainly do, Alex. That's a great question. With our aluminum products, the maximum height is 10 feet. The width is unlimited. Uh, due to the product strength. With the vinyl product, our maximum width is eight feet and the maximum width is 19 and a half feet. Wow. So that's, I mean, that's big. It's, that's still, it that's a is. big piece of glass and you've got to be able to move it. Now I've seen some humongous, humongous doors that they're putting out on the market now. But if, look, if you've got to go up and take two hands and put all your body weight against it to, to get it to open or close, maybe it's too big. <laughs> Correct. Our unhinged system is really manufactured and created for ease of use mm -hmm. uh, for all members of the family. Um, we really thrive on and are proud of that statement. Let's talk about the um, threshold because I am, have always had, pro if I've had problems with door units, particularly like patio door units, mm -hmm. it starts at the bottom. Correct. It starts where water comes in and water starts having a negative effect on the threshold or the bottom of the door or something like that. How have you dealt with that? You know, we've tried to minimize that by the size of the track, just the way the product's manufactured. It really minimizes the impact of that threshold. Uh, so we've done our best um, in comparison to our competitors in terms of minimizing that. But the design is really intended of our track to keep moisture out mm -hmm. and comfort in. Well, you also have a recommendation. You have kind of a standard recommendation of putting a pan under it. So when I'm talking about a pan, uh, you can buy a plastic pan, basically sits down on the concrete, and that track system will sit right down in it. And that'll protect. And the idea is to keep water from coming underneath the track and getting into the house. That's sort of the whole point there, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. And so along with that has to be a drainage system in that track. So when we know water will get in there. Now, the, the door we put in, we put this door in um, in the fall. And about a week or two after we put the door unit in, a big old cold front blows in. Now, if you'll go to my YouTube channel, Remodel Revolution on YouTube, I did a video. It's up about this door unit and the wind was blowing 40 and the temperature was in the thirties or colder. I can't remember. It may have been close to icy. And I went in and I put my hand on the door and I felt all down the seams to see if I could feel any wind blowing through couple little places, a teeny smidgen, which I would expect on a wind like that. So, most doors have a wind rating. Mm -hmm. What is your wind rating on your doors? Our design pressure is 30. 30. 30. Okay. So we were, I was above that. We were literally in the 40 mile an hour uh, wind range and I barely felt anything come through. I was not, it wasn't something that bothered me. It was something that I thought would be normal. Correct. Our, the, a lot of it has to do, Alex, with the way the product is manufactured. It's a tongue and groove construction. So each of the panels individual panels lock into one another, as you know, mm -hmm. and it just provides a, the strength of a wall unit. Um, well, I didn't ever detect, and this was a great test mm -hmm. for me because um, I, like you, have gone through in my life in construction all sorts of iterations of units where we actually invented them on the mm -hmm. job site. You know, mm -hmm. people would say, I, I want this whole wall open. We'd go, well, how do we do that? And then when we were finished, it all looked nice and it was functional, mm -hmm. but the wind would blow through, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so this was always a, a big point with me is how are we protecting that 
encroachment of the wind. On the end, one of the things I love about your units is you have a screen that goes with this unit, and that screen is like a hidden screen or can be. It can. Let's talk about the screen. It's fantastic. It allows, especially in an environment like Texas, where certain during certain parts of the year we have issues with bugs, or anywhere in the U.S. for that matter, the screen allows or protects folks or allows folks to enjoy that space uh, with the comfort of a insect-free environment. And we have some options on the screen? Uh, we do. We, you can either have, depending on the size, there are some limitations. You can either have one screen that you pull across mm -hmm. the unit or you can have two that adjoin or meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, and those are, that's what we used. And that screen uh, works beautifully. It, it, it hooks up right in the middle. It's tight. It's easy to use. Now, we put them in a pocket so that when the screen is, is open, close, when the, when the screen is in, not being used, it's actually in a pocket that you can't see it. So it was very interesting. Uh, a lot of good versatility there. The screen system, when you look at it, you go, oh my gosh. But in in reality, it was really pretty easy to put in. It just, it was scary to look at because you've got to have all these moving parts that you have to put together. But uh, I really do love the system. I love your product. I'm really proud that you all moved into DFW. I'm really glad you're here. Yeah, we're, we're really happy to be here. Yeah. I think Texas is such a dynamic market and it allows us to be in a position to really um, manage our business uh, through the rest of the country. California well, is an important part of our history and will be of our future. However, we're happy to be in Texas as well. Well, I've enjoyed my relationship with you and, and your team. Um, anytime I've had a question or it, uh, I haven't really had any real issues, but I know that if I did, it would be addressed uh, quickly. And thank you so much for being here today. And thank you for being a, a per participating in this show. We really do appreciate it so much. Great, Alex, thanks for having us. Sure, sure. Um, if you are thinking about uh, remodeling or doing an addition or building a house and you want a really handsome, smart guy, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Alex Guthrie Construction. Uh, I've been in business about 40 years. Uh, we I've spent my whole life doing high-end remodeling. I'm very client-oriented. Uh, we spend a, an extraordinary amount of time with our clients in the planning phase and all the way through the finish. I take every project I do very personal, which uh, can sometimes be hard on me, but my clients love it. So. Uh, if you need to uh, do a remodel or you're thinking about it, plan it, you want to just discuss whether or not it's a good idea, give me a call. Contact me, 469-446-8508. That's Alex Guthrie Construction. Alex at Alex Guthrie Construction. If you want to contact me on email. And I'm looking forward to next week having uh, Randy Hargrave with Hargrave at Hargrave Foundation Repair. Um, you know it's never the wrong time to talk foundations and foundation repair. Also, we're going to have a special guest appearance from the one and only my old friend and mentor, Chris Miles, who is right now, he's up in Vegas, says he's doing research on new products in the International Builder Show, but sometimes Chris misbehaves, so I'm just not sure. Um, we'll find out. <laughs> We'll find out. He's going to be in next week. We're, we're going to talk about some of the things he dug up in Vegas. Um, thank you to Richard Suarez and Panoramic Doors for being here. Thank you, Ziggy Becker, for being the Engineer of the Year Award. That's that's the award I'm giving out. Uh, you're, you're awesome. Thank you, On Air Media, and, of course, our sponsors. Uh, we really do appreciate all of you, and most of all, Thank you to our audience who stays with us week in and week out, and we're growing rapidly. We really do appreciate it. This is Alex Guthrie signing off. Until next week, I hope you have a good one. You can catch Remodel Revolution anytime. Follow the show on the website, remodelrevolutionradio.com, or on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, using the handle at Remodel Revolution Radio. You can always listen to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and tune in. And watch the show anytime on YouTube.
Thank you.